Hello and welcome to Executive Insights in association with KPMG. I am Sarah Freeman, Managing Editor of Business and Finance, and today I'll be speaking with Tony Smurfett, CEO of Smurfett Kappa Group. Tony will be sharing key insights into Smurfett Kappa's success, as well as the challenges of the pandemic, policy and opportunities ahead. Tony, you're very welcome and thank you for joining us. Thank you, Sarah. Good to be with you. Let's get started. Tony, can you tell us some of the key business strategies you think resulted in Smurfit Kappa's success? I think, uh, Sarah, we have uh, in Smurfit Kappa been building on a lot of the work we've done over decades uh, in innovation, in our attention to sustainability, uh, in our in our investment plan in the company, uh, and really. The success of the company is down to building on those foundations, but always at the heart of it is our people. Uh, I mean, everything revolves around having good people in an organization. And, you know, one of the, the things I'm most proud of in Smurfit Kappa is the longevity of service of our, of our, our management uh, and, and a lot of our, our, our people throughout the organization who, who really really like the company, uh, like what we're doing uh, in the area of sustainability, in the area of innovation, in the area of investment. And that really is what the, the area that the, 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 the key reason why Smurf Kappa is successful and will continue to be successful, hopefully. That type of longevity is so important in, in team colleagues and, and employees. And I suppose it brings me to my next question, which is what personal characteristics do you bring to the organization? Well, I, I think, you know, I think a leader's role is to set, uh, to be like a conductor of an organization, so to speak. And, you know, you have to live your life by certain principles and guidelines. And, and if you can put those into an organization, uh, I think then if, if they're right, uh, I think the organization is better for it. So, you know, we believe in loyalty, integrity, respect as key core values of the company. And that's what I, I talk to all of our people all the time about, you know, uh, you know, respecting each other, you know, having the right focus on people, uh, making sure that, you, you know, you, in, you, you, you have loyalty within the organization. And, uh, you know, I think they're the kind of attributes that people can sign up to. I mean, people want to be part of a decent organization, uh, an organization that is, has the right values. And, you know, that's why we have longevity, frankly, because, you know, people like what we're doing uh, and they like the area we're in. And, and I think that's standing to us. And, and that's why we have so many loyal uh, people in the organization. A conductor. I like that analogy. And changing tack slightly, I suppose, what advice would you, would you give to others who are driving for similar success? Well, I think... <laughs> I suppose the 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 old adage of get up early and go to bed late is is always the the the, the good one in that scenario, Sarah. I think uh, you know hard work uh, never killed anyone, and having purpose in your life is is really important. So, I think for for myself, uh, you know, working hard is 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 critical to the success of myself, uh, and I would say the same for everybody. I think you know, enjoy what you do. Uh, if you don't enjoy what you do, then leave, get out and do something that you actually enjoy doing. Um, and But when you do do something in an organization or in your own personal work, work hard at it because that's that's going to give you A, personal satisfaction and B, uh, success ultimately. Some sound advice there, Tony. And I suppose we seem to be emerging from the worst of the pandemic, but how has COVID changed your business? Um, you know, there are winners and losers out of COVID. And I think our business is a winner out of COVID in the sense that people have been much more uh, aware of the sustainable nature of our world uh, now than they were before. I think obviously e-commerce is a huge beneficiary of the, the pandemic. And clearly, all, all, most of e-commerce is packaged in sustainable packaging, i.e. our type of packaging. Um, so that's a benefit for us. I think, you, you know, when the COVID hit, Sarah, you know, I said to everybody that the key thing that we had to do was communicate, communicate, communicate. And we were very active across all of our 36 countries, making sure that everybody understood what was happening, giving people support. Uh, and I suppose what's changed for us as an organization is that we don't have to travel as much. Uh, these technologies that we're using currently, Zoom or... Uh, Microsoft Teams, you know, have evolved 
to such an extent that you know the the idea of getting on a plane for a two-hour meeting you know just doesn't isn't going to happen anymore it doesn't mean that we don't have personal interface it's really important to have that but uh, let's say small meetings can be done more effectively and i think you know that's going to cut a lot of people's budgets uh, including ours in in travel and, and entertainment i think that's how a, a fundamental change of all organizations because of the pandemic and i suppose it's much more sustainable too and we're all so much more aware of sustainability factors these days um what do you see as the main issue concerning packaging companies in general well i think it depends what type of packaging when you talk about uh our packaging, you know, what we pride ourselves on, Sarah, is to ensure that we do the correct engineering uh, of packaging for our customers. So in other words, it does not benefit anyone to over package. Uh, and so what we continue to do with our thousand plus designers around the world is speak to all of our 67,000 customers about how to optimize packaging. Um, and so clearly as a, winning, as a winner of the pandemic, you know, we have to help our customers, you know, make sure that they reduce their carbon footprint by ensuring that the packaging is is fit for purpose, isn't overpackaged. And, and I think that's one of the key learnings that we've been able to continue to show our customers, you know, how working with a company like Smirka Kappa, they can actually be even more sustainable than, than they, they were previously. That's a really interesting aspect of the business that I wouldn't have been as aware of, I suppose. And in general, Tony, how would you view Ireland's general performance in your sector? Yeah, I mean, I think Ireland in our sector is quite small. I mean, you know, there's there's a it's a it's a relatively small market. It represents less than one percent of our global turnover. Uh, so it's a small market in packaging, but yet, you know, we have seen probably more growth here in the last year than we have seen for decades. Uh, if you go back to uh, the, the noughties uh, and the last decade or so, it, it's mainly been a service-led economy, Ireland, uh, but we have seen some more manufacturing coming up uh, in recent years. And so that's been positive for us and obviously our competitors too. Uh, but uh, so we've seen more growth in Ireland than we've seen you know, for a long period of time. So I think from our sector point of view in packaging, I think there's a lot of opportunity. That sounds very positive indeed. And Tony, I'd like to ask you about policy a little bit. What should policymakers focus on to support the sector further? Well, you know, I, I operating in 36 countries, I think the most important thing for business people is to have certainty of and stability. Uh, I, I think we want to see governments be consistent. We want to see governments making sure that when they introduce policies that they are not anti-business. And that's really the only thing I would say Ireland, as I say, you know, has had to had to deal with things like Brexit. Has had to deal with uh, you know the complications with regard to that. Uh, but whatever government it is, you, you know, we really just want to see consistency and and a, a applicability of the law. And if that is done cons correctly, then then that's fine for us as businesses. So consistency is key. And Tony, you mentioned thirty six countries. I mean, what what else do you see as major opportunities for your business in the future? Well, we've just embarked on a, a program, uh, Sarah, of investing, you know, almost uh, over a billion euros in our business uh, in the coming year. Um, uh, whether that all falls in this particular year or not, uh, we, we have to wait and see because there are some supply chain issues and delays of machinery. But, you know, we see opportunities in practically every market in which we operate. I wouldn't suggest that any market is particularly better or worse uh, than another. I think that Every market that we have sees customer growth. Every market that we have sees customers looking for sustainability in packaging. Every market we have is looking for innovation. Uh, so, you know, when I, when I look at the vista of all that we could do, I mean, I have much more demand than 1 billion euros of, of need, but obviously we have to do things in a, in a progressive manner. So, you know, the, the, the company still sees opportunities everywhere. It's just a question of how we put those into, into practice in the, in the years ahead. Tony, thank you so much for an insightful discussion and deep dive into the success of Smurfit Kappa and your leadership strategies. 
Thank you for joining us today for Executive Insights and Association of KPMG. You can find more content just like this on businessandfinance.com. Thank you.